Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the library celebration. My name is Sarah Barron. I'm the dean of the library here, and we're thrilled that you're here to help us celebrate this building and this library and this university. So let's start with a brief prayer. Lord Jesus, please be with us today during our fellowship. Thank you so much for the 30 years of Regent University and the 25 years of this library. Thank you for the blessings that you have given us. And please be with us over the next 25 and 30 years. We ask this in your name. Amen. Um, I'd like to start just by uh, giving you a little information about the library, and then we are going to have a preview of the forthcoming library documentary. Um, the committee that has been working on this celebration has also been doing an oral history project, and we have been interviewing um, the earliest library staff at this place. So in a month or so, we will be having a full-length feature film, which I know you're all going to want to see. Um, today, we're just going to show you three or four minutes. and, um, and, and and you'll be surprised at some of the faces that you'll see in this little video. Um, after that, we're going to hear some remarks from Dr. Pinal and from Dr. Arroyo and from Dean Hughes, Dr. Hughes. And then we would like to invite any of you who are former or current staff to come up and share some stories. So if you have stories about the library or about each other that you want to share, um, you're more than welcome to do that. And we'll close with our new chaplain, Dr. Richard Kidd, who will join us and, um, and bless this library. So let me start just by saying a little bit about this institution. And as you know, the mission of this library is to provide resources, services, instruction, and facilities for creating Christian leaders to change the world. And Dr. Pat Robertson wanted a library that would hold a million volumes. That 30 years ago, that was the, the touchstone for a good library. It had to hold a million volumes. He knew that if the university, if then CBN University was going to grow, it needed a great library. And the library staff over the last 30 years created that great library. And we're so thrilled that many of you are with us today. If you are a former uh, staff member of the library, would you please stand and let us recognize you? Welcome. We, we're so glad you're here. And I do want to send greetings from Lois Lehman and Eva Kiewit. I visited them along with Dr. Leanne Strum a few weeks ago, and they really wanted to be with us today. We had a wonderful time talking with them and, and interviewing them, and they, they wanted to be with us today so bad, but they were not well enough to travel. So I send you their greetings as well. Those of you who are current library staff, why don't you stand as well? And we can clap for you too. Okay. <laughs> Many of these folks have helped put on this event today, so thank you so much. Um, it was 25 years ago that a pile of sand stood where we are right now. This building wasn't here, these books weren't here, this fabulous carpet was not here 25 years ago. Um, <laughs> Today, 25 years later, we have a world-class library for a world-class institution. We have a highly respected and educated staff and faculty, and we know from continuous assessment and surveys that many of you have completed for us that we are meeting the educational and research needs of the Regent community. This morning, I had breakfast with Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. And one of the things he told me is that he is appalled at how the national media, journalists, and even some of his interns depend on Google, Wikipedia, and other secondary unverified resources. Guess what my response was to this? I said, that's why we have libraries and library staff who teach people the skills needed to be information literate members of society. It is a great challenge we face um, competing with Google and Wikipedia, competing with the internet in general, and especially when we are pioneers of internet usage. But we can and must fight and win that competition. Regent University Library stands today as an integral component of the educational and academic curriculum at this University. Today we celebrate both this gorgeous building that was erected 25 years ago and also 30 years of this amazing institution that is Regent University. So thank you so much for being here. 
Um, we're going to show you now a, a little preview of the library documentary that we're working on. And we're going to ask you to kind of turn around sideways, and we have two TV monitors here, and um, hopefully the technology will show us <laughs> the same thing on both screens. And um, we're, oops, did that start already? Now, don't you want to see more? Aren't you just eager for more of that? Um, the, the longer version will include a lot of video clips from the oral histories we've done, and they, they really are amazing. You saw the one with, with um, Albert Liu, and that was a lot of fun. So I want to recognize the person who's working on this video and who created this for us. Jennifer Bird is in the back. She's a communications student here, and she did a great job. And Jennifer is also editing the full-length feature, so um, we'll give, make sure she has a great byline on that. Thank you, Jennifer, and, and also thank the committee that has worked so hard to put this together. Well, what I'd like to do now is turn the podium over for a few minutes to one of our strongest supporters, Dr. Randall Pinnell. Cool. Let me see if I can. I'm not one of your tallest, uh, but I guess I am now. I am only one of the strongest because I still go to the gym every day at lunchtime. I did a Google search before I came over here, <clears throat> and I wanted to see if there was any such thing as uh, library humor online. I was absolutely amazed that there were hundreds of pages of websites related to library humor. Now, I don't know if that surprise, surprises you. It uh, honestly surprised me. I thought, well, I don't think of librarians as humorless, but I think of libraries as where you go and do serious business and do things. So I should have been surprised that when you're doing very serious work, the only recourse that one has in working in a library and uh, serving uh, people and taking care of all the details, there has to be latent humor somewhere. And so I, I kind of did some searching and looking through these mountains of digital data. And I, and I found one particular uh, bit of humor. Yeah, you'll think it's very little bit of humor. Uh, but uh, because this library also houses the law library, I came across this question. What happens when you cross a librarian and a lawyer? <laughs> Anyone know that answer? Well, I'll give you the answer. You get all the information you want, but you cannot understand it. <laughs> I don't know. Is that true? Uh, Dean Brock, he's a lot. Yeah, right there. You know, we just have to do that. But in my search, I found a, a, a little-known website from the Regent University Library that was entitled Obscure Campus Library Rules and Policies. Now, I'm not going to read all of them because there were about 15 pages of these obscure <laughs> policies. But I thought you might be interested in a few of these that you could use, maybe file these away for a little bit later. Uh, one of the rules is that the uh, one millionth visitor will receive a lifetime supply of turtle wax <laughs> at the university. Could come in handy. I don't know, I did not know this, but the first Tuesday of every month is find the hidden $100 bill day in the library. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? I, I didn't know that. I'm sure Dean Wooten didn't know you were doing that. Uh, there is another one that I, uh, some of the uh, basketball fans would probably like. If, if you can sink a book in the return bin from 50 feet away, you can win $1,000. This is one of my favorite. If you find a dead guy in the stacks, you get free tuition. <laughs> and then this one was a little bit bothersome to me because I work in academic affairs. Time spent sleeping in the reference section of the library earns you academic credit. <laughs> Didn't know that. So, you know, libraries are fun places. I don't know what you, well, let me ask you that question. What do you think of first when you think of a library? This is a group involvement. Shh. Oh, okay. So you guys are old-fashioned about libraries. Shh. We don't. We don't shh anymore. What else? Books. Did I hear books? 
And I think that would have been my first answer. But because I was asked to speak and I thought I probably ought to put some thought into this, you can't tell that I did, but uh, nonetheless, I did. I really think that libraries certainly are about books. There's, there's a, a decorum, et cetera. But you know, libraries are really about people. A university is about people, but a library especially, because people come to libraries. All the books in the world sitting on a shelf do no one any good. And yet all that we do in a university, especially a university like Regent, is to try to prepare and equip people to go and make a difference with their life. And the information they need, the perspectives they need, the competencies that they need to really make a difference in the world, to fulfill who they are as people, they find that in a library. And so no matter what a person's discipline, no matter what a person's background, there is some segue, some connectivity of everyone that goes to a library. I know in, in my days of uh, graduate work, I spent a lot of time in the library because I just uh, I was working full time and trying to do a PhD at the same time. And so I had to find seams around and I I'd, uh, cajoled and bribed the head librarian to the point where I got a key to the librarian and I would spend a lot of all nighters in the library. We had a carol section in the library and so I would spend hours and hours and days and days trying to research my dissertation to get it finished. But when I look back, I don't think about all the study. I think about all of the friends that I had in that Carroll area and the fact that we were studying together and what it made of us. And these are still my best friends in my life. Not all of my classmates, not my most famous classmates, but those that were in that library when I was in there. And it became a, a great foundation of really the friendships that I've taken with me. And so I know we're going to hear a lot of different perspectives, and, and you have your own perspectives about a library. But I'm, I'm thrilled, uh, certainly Sarah and this library have uh, really a vision of attending and serving the people that come to this place. It would be real easy to say, you need the books, the doors are open, help yourself but to serve them as they come, to serve us as we come here for the information we so desperately need to make the difference that we're all called to make in this life is a great service of this library. So I want to say that I appreciate that. I am grateful. Thank you to the library for that. And so it's very easy to be a supporter of a library which is based on all of those principles and most importantly from my perspective is to equip men and women by making it easy for them to come together, to make it pleasurable for them to come together, and even no shushing anymore to tell a library joker or not, because there are hundreds of thousands of library jokes out there on the web that all of you need to be telling each other every time you come to the library. So happy birthday to the library building. Uh, happy 30th birthday to the library itself, but 25th to the building. And I know all of you have been touched by libraries or you wouldn't be here. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you, uh, Pat, for having the vision for what a, really what a real university is about and the vital place the university takes. Thank you. Thank you, Randall. Dean Arroyo, did I see? There, there. Well, I'm really honored just to say a, a few words. And, you know, you probably don't know this, but one reason why Dean Barron wanted to, you know, this 25th anniversary is because she wasn't born yet 25 years ago. So, so, so she wanted to know how life was really lived back then. Uh, you know, all I can say is that this is a beautiful structure. Uh, many of us had our offices up here on the third floor. We've had fantastic chapels. We still have great chapels in the, in the auditorium, which is a real way of faith and learning integration. You know, when you're praising the Lord, when you're receiving more from the Holy Spirit, and all this knowledge is just an arm. I mean, that's what Regent is all about. But what the library has really been about are, are the people, the people that serve in the library. That's why... This has big, become, no matter who the librarian is, from Francis all the way to Sarah, 
there's still been that spirit, you know, that temple of the Holy Spirit that, and within the, uh, the, the dean and then all the librarians and all the staff um, have, have just made this just a great place to be. And I think one sign of that is even though we're in the information age and it's so easy, never needing to go into a library building, you still have a great facility like this that where you can come back and get in touch with real books, real people, real brick and mortar. And, uh, and, that, and that has happened, you know, it's, um, it's changed, it's, it's, it's become different, yet it's still the same great place. So I congratulate uh, all of you that have worked at the library for the last 30 years, especially in this building for the last 25, and uh, happy birthday to us all. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Arroyo. Dean Hughes. That's a tall step for a short person. <laughs> Did anyone sing happy birthday to the library? You know, if you sing happy birthday and eat birthday cake, it takes the calories out. So join me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear library. Happy birthday to you. Lovely. Give yourselves a hand. And you can now have a second piece of cake. Thank you for allowing me, Sarah, to speak uh, on this wonderful occasion. What is a library? Well, according to my J.L. Rodale synonym finder, and not Wikipedia, not Google, a library has been called a biblioteca, an anthenaeum, stacks, reading rooms, reference rooms, study halls, book collections, manuscripts, and publications, it's all that and so much more. When I was a student here for my master's, class of 83, all, that was, all of that was in one room and no internet, which meant I spent a lot of time in the libraries of Old Dominion University and Norfolk State, not to mention taking full advantage of our own ILL service. Yes, I had to walk uphill both ways to get to the library in the snow. The library today is far beyond the library I used in the admin building. It is indeed the heart of the university. It is certainly central to scholarly pursuits, but Dean Barron and her faculty and staff do so much more than house materials. As is said, the people is what makes this library. They constantly educate us in technology for scholarly pursuits. They expand our reading horizons, and yes, there are things to read besides journals and texts and they keep us aware of endeavors beyond our region community, such as this wonderful book exhibit that we have right now. For that, we are most appreciative. I take some personal pride in the outreach and enthusiasm of our library today, although I really have no right to, as I was the chair of the committee that selected Dean Bar Sarah Barron. That may well be my claim to fame at Regent. <laughs> By the way, did you notice how Sarah is a hot name right now? Um, could it possibly be that McCain got the wrong Sarah? <laughs> Libraries have always been a part of my life. The wonders of the book began with my first library card from the Andrew Carnegie Library in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That library was built with permanence in mind. High ceilings, stone pillars, busts of famous authors throughout its great hall, I was in awe. I remain in awe of libraries, and especially appreciate our beautiful library. This library is well established as one of bricks and clicks, and probably in the future we'll have some technology not yet used, maybe holograms, who knows. Technology is wonderful, but it's the people of the library who make it the heart of the university, as has already been said, so it must be true. You've had three witnesses now. I cannot end without giving huge accolades to the library faculty and staff. You will not find a group of more service-oriented people on campus. They invented the concept of customer-friendly, and I do not know what we would do without them. Happy birthday.
Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Dean Hughes. And we want to want to give you all an opportunity to talk too. So I would invite you, who have worked here before, or who are working here now, to th to think about a story you'd like to share. And if you have anything you want to share about this library, about this place, what it was like when you were here many years ago, please feel free to do that. And I'll start by giving you one of my um, stories. So that'll give you a minute to, to think of one. I'm looking at people I can call on if nobody comes up. Um, when, uh, when I came here to interview at Regent three years ago, and Dean Hughes was the, the chair of my committee, one of the, the meetings that I had during the course of two days of interviews, I had two days of interviews nonstop, maybe 10 or 15 meetings, I don't even remember how many people I met with, but one of the meetings I had was with all of the library staff. And as the meeting was winding down, they, they asked me a lot of the professional questions that you ask during interviews. Someone, and I really don't remember who, but someone on the staff said to me, Sarah, what do you think about this carpet? <laughs> now, there's a story behind this carpet. I, I did not know what the story was at the time, but imagine me. I'm sitting there. I'm interviewing. I love. I got here. I loved it. I really wanted this job, and I get asked a loaded question, and I thought, how do I answer this? <laughs> um, and I, I don't remember what I said, but it must have been the right thing because I still got hired. So um, I got here, and I do love this place. I love this university. I would, I would beg to differ with Dean Hughes, who I've heard say she has the best job in the world. I think I do. And so what I'd like to do now is if any of you who have been here, worked here in the past, would like to come up and, and share a story, you're more than welcome to. So anyone? Try not to be dignified, and I've been hearing all these stories about myself. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to ruin them. <clears throat> I just thought, what would I say? You've said it all. You've done it all. But did you ever farm? Did you? I was raised on a reservation in Oklahoma. We planted seed and expected to reap a great harvest. So 20, 30 years ago, I had resigned from Evangel University. I walked down the hall going back to my office and Glenn Burnett, who is now the vice president, said, well, what are you gonna do now? Oh, I said, I don't know, I'm gonna play around, I guess. He said, my guess is you'll go somewhere and start another library. Not on your life. <laughs> now in the fall, Zenas always sent me about 20 students to work for me. Among those 20 students were preacher's kids and missionary kids. And I said, books, I've had it. PKs and Mish kids, I don't want them anymore. <laughs> he said, but you're always so thoughtful and you, you, they love you and you teach them. That's all right, but I'm through. You understand? <laughs> I walked in my office and my secretary said, I've been trying to reach you. There's a gentleman on the phone. He said he needs to talk to you immediately. It's very important. Who is it? I, I don't know, but he says it's important. It's very important. Now, all, right, all right, Cora. You think it's important? Get him on the phone. I'll talk to him. He said, I want you to come to Virginia Beach. And I said, I've never been to Virginia Beach. I don't know. I thought he's some super salesman somewhere. He said, I'll have a prepaid ticket waiting for you at the airport. I said, no, I can't go. This is our baccalaureate. This is my last time. They're having a tea and an honor. No, 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 no. He said, I'll not take no for an answer. 
Tuesday, we will see you in Virginia Beach. I got home and the phone was ringing. This is the airport. I have a prepaid ticket for you. You want it delivered to your home or will you pick it up Tuesday? <laughs> now, I've never been to Virginia Beach. I had never met Lou Shelton and I had heard about Pat Robertson and that was a source of my knowledge. But Tuesday found me flying out to Virginia Beach. The most stupid thing I thought that I could ever do. What am I doing? What's, what's wrong with me? I'm in a plane going to Virginia Beach. I've never been there. I never met Lou Shelton. I've never met Pat Robertson. I don't even know him when I get off the plane. This is sort of stupid. When I got off the plane, I just still didn't know. I was just wandering around, walking down the concourse. And I heard somebody say, Francis, Francis. I kind of glanced over my shoulder, you know. I don't know if they talk. Could be another Francis, you know. <laughs> kind of looked over my shoulder. Yes, I'm Lou. I'm Lou Shelton. I've got a car waiting for us. We got to go by the office and see Pat. We went by this Pat's office in Pembroke. You remember that? They put me on the payroll. <laughs> they didn't have book one. <laughs> they didn't know the difference between LC and DC. <laughs> so I went home. Went back to my old library, my old office, my old secretary. She said, uh-huh, uh-huh. I said, Cora, get all those, get all that records in there. We ordered everything we knew back in my old office. We ordered it, had it delivered to Virginia Beach. And then I came back and I put my house up for sale Flew back and forth, I guess a couple of months. I didn't have anywhere to, the books were delivered. All of the, the tools, you know, you don't just go in and make up your mind what you're going to do and what, where this class, how it's cataloged, where it's going to go. Is this a reference or, you know, I knew to learn one thing. You don't put textbooks on the shelf. See, we were, we were visited for accreditation, and they, the, the committee waited and said, I've got to go see the librarian. So he came in, and he said, I want to question you. Why do you have those textbooks on the shelf? I said, well, I'm very honest. I'll tell you. There was a Kiwanis club wanted to give us some books. And the Rotary Club said, club said they wouldn't be outdone, and they gave us some books. And when they came, they were all dirty, moldy, but we cleaned them up, put them on the shelf, because you folks were coming to accredit us, and we didn't want you to see a bunch of empty shelves. <laughs> we had to fill them up with something. <laughs> we did. He went out and he gave his report to the committee, and he said, that is one honest librarian. <laughs> So they passed on us. They, they ordered all these materials, sent them to Virginia Beach. And I had nowhere to put them, no office. But right down the hall from Paul, Pat's office, Pat's office, there's a closet. And in this closet, there's some shelves just right for books. So I'm sitting in the off in the hallway, working out of the closet, figured on books, setting it in order. There it was. Pat came by. What's she doing there? Barbara said she didn't have any office. She's putting her books up. He said, "I told you, I want her in that third office down there." I want her to have a secretary. 
Well, from there, I remember then being back on the reservation when we planted the seeds. How the seed grew. We had great harvest fields out there. And, and now I look around and I see <laughs> that little close. A little closet, all the tools on two shelves, that's the seed. And now I've been here, visited this uh, two big libraries, one before this and then this one. But coming here, we gathered the flowers, we picked the fruit, and we went from Pembroke to I don't know where that first one was. Then we went to Chesapeake. I don't know where we went. We, we moved about three times. Finally got into administration building. And this is wonderful. And I think from the one little seed was planted in that closet, here we are. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share a story? Yes. Be Lynn Bowen. I was hired by Miss Berkeheiser in. I was hired by Miss Berkeheiser in um, December of '79 or '78. I started in January of '79, and you know what we had in our in our cage here. <laughs> it was the Lord had Miss Berkeheiser here to bring me here. And I had just come back from Peace Corps and I computer had outdone my job. I was a librarian, but um, she gave me the opportunity to come and learn computers and to help this little bitty library get going. And I was thinking that um, you can't despise those small beginnings because you never know where they're gonna go. You just don't know where they're gonna go. So, you know, I'm thankful to be able to say thank you to you, Miss Berkey Heiser. And I bring greetings from Dr. Kiewit and from Miss Lehman. I left my car in their, outside their apartment in um, Burn, Indiana, and they are just too fragile to come, but they said, we'd love to be there and we'll be with you in spirit. So they send greetings. But um, I wanted just to describe a little bit. When I first started, I remember Miss Berkey Heiser's desk very clearly in the warehouse over in Greenbrier. A uh, great big room, she had her desk and she had a couple of catalogers that had come along ahead of me. And uh, we were working as fast and furious as we could in that little warehouse. And upstairs we noticed, um, Deb Lewis and I were upstairs looking at the um, archives and there's a picture of Miss Berkeheiser. She doesn't have her hard hat on in that photo, but um, outside of the admin building when it was being built and we were biding our time over there waiting for that building to get finished so we could get out of the closet, not have to commute to chapel anymore, not have to commute to any other meetings anymore, and we could come on across. And, and I just went in today and looked. I could still see the cataloging technical services office, you know, back in that corner. It's got a few partitions, but the sink is still there, and the cupboards are still there, and, and uh, the library's got lots of walls in it, but that whole one side of the building on the first floor used to be the the library, and we did the best we could do. I, it would have been fun to see the card catalog get buried. <laughs> but um, we um, were very thankful, very thankful for um, Ms. Lehman, for Dr. Kiewit, for their vision, for Ms. Berkeheiser, not despising those you know, small beginnings, and, and for everybody, you know, for Deb, for Lowell, for all the different ones that have come along and just put in their plow to the ground moving along as the Lord brought and instructed and directed. And um, who knows where this place is going yet. The Lord's good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, come on. Um, what is a library? And what's the purpose of a library? What's the real meaning? 
and where does it really happen? I was here 25 years ago when we first built this building. And as a graduate student, we had little rooms that we could keep private stash of books. And sometimes until midnight, after being in the admin building in the School of Biblical Studies, we'd study with our professors until they went to bed and left. But groups of students would get together and pour through the books. And Bob Sevigny would point us toward different places in the stacks. We could get different books and ideas. And then way into the wee hours of the night, the library, fortunately, was open till midnight, which is wonderful. And with the books, we could open up and we could meet the great thinkers of the ages, the wisdom of people you can't go out and meet, like Francis of Assisi and others. And then those ideas would gel. And sometimes we'd go sleep for a little bit and come back at 4 o'clock and meet in the chapel and pray and intercede. But epiphanies happened. And they happened because someone brought books to a place and faculty, wonderful faculty together, Dr. Rod Williams and others from all over the country, and then students from all over the world. And it all happened many times within this building in little rooms and back in the stacks. And on behalf of the students and the, and the faculty, I just want to say thank you to all the ones that made that possible for those epiphanies and that wonderful knowledge to be spread. Thank you. No other burning desires? Well, we would like to close this. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, good. Come on up. Hi, I'm Deb Lewis. I was here around 1981 through 1985 to 6, somewhere around there. Um, so I was over at the administration building, circulation manager. Uh, I also am a graduate of Regent University, so I had that dual um, wonderful gift. And as a circulation manager at that time when we moved over to this new building, um, I took care of not only circulation but also the AV department, uh, which now is a department. But I also had an opportunity to work very closely with the reference librarians. And when you talk about humor, well, <clears throat> in the administration building with a couple of the uh, uh, reference librarians, Maria and uh, Lowell, who aren't here today. Um, and then I've, you've got me as circulation manager, and of course, shh, be really quiet. Well, we would um, flip each other paper clips across the way to each other. So we had fun while we were still working very hard. One of the memories that I have here in this building, um, well, there's quite a few actually, but uh, as an employee, but also as a student, uh, I spent a lot of time in different nooks and cranes of the entire building where with students, where we would just find students in corners and even as a staff member, I would just sit down and we would pray together and it's, it's just a wonderful place to be able to do that at a Christian college, university of this uh, caliber. So I'm appreciative of being able to be a part of the ceilings. Anyone else? Well, I hope that you will share your stories with each other um, as soon as we finish this, this formal program. And I do want to mention we have, in celebration of our birthday, we have several exhibits going on in the library. And one in the lobby actually shows photographs of this building being built, starting with the pile of sand that I mentioned earlier. So you can actually see pictures from the pile of sand through the progression of this building um, being built and, and opening. So please do take a few minutes to look at those as well. What we'd like to do is close the session today with a prayer for the library. And Dr. Richard Kidd, the new chaplain for the university, will be doing that for us. So Dr. Kidd. Thank you. The uh, wisest man in the world who no doubt spent a little bit of time in library said, of the making of many books there is no end, and much study wearies the body. As a student in these halls, I'm sure every student who's found that phrase in Ecclesiastes is shocked and perhaps a little amused. But right before it, 
the uh, wisest man in the world also said that the sayings of the wise are like goads. Their collected sayings are like nails given by one shepherd. And it's going to be our prayer, and I'll ask you to join me here as I pray, that uh, it wouldn't just be a collection of knowledge. The Internet is proof that that's no good but that it would be nails that drive a firm foundation for our students, that they would be goads to drive them to the truth. So would you join me in praying for this place? Lord God, um, uh, books in themselves are nothing. It's truth and wisdom that sets men and women free. It's men and women whose desire for the truth produces such works of art as the St. John's Bible, the illuminated word. We pray that that's what this building and the, this institution would be for the next 30, 60, and 100 years. That it would be the kind of place that sets men free, that is a goad to drive them on to you and to the truth that sets men around the world free. That it would be a nail that would form a firm foundation for a life and a worldview set on you. We pray for every staff member, every faculty member who serves in this building. Give them wisdom and knowledge as they serve you and these students. Give them encouragement from these stories that a seed is so powerful for in it is life. We thank you, Jesus, that you are called the Logos, the Word, the collected wisdom of God, the very expression God breathed of truth. We ask that you would reside in these halls and that the hearts of the men and the women who come here would indeed be encouraged to pursue you, the embodiment of wisdom, and that they would become Christian leaders to change the world for you. I pray it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Kidd. And before you um, get up, I do want to remind you we have but several photographers running around. So please make sure we get pictures. And if you have friends you want to get pictures with, um, grab a photographer and let's get pictures. We also have a videographer, John Ritterbush, in the back. So um, if you would like to leave a video, make a video clip or a video greeting, please do that as well. Um, we have the three exib art exhibits going on. We also have tours if you would like to walk around the library and see what's changed since you were here or um, see what's new, especially the wall being torn down from the second to the third floor up to the law library. We encourage you to do that as well. And we're gonna finish with a few door prizes. And so you should have a number. I hope you all got a number. And Leanne Hillary, well, we have, um, we have several boxes of note cards from the St. John's Bible. We also have a copy of the Gospels and the Acts, which is from the St. John's Bible, and that's currently on display. And we have two sets of the next couple of months of book club selections. So we're giving away books. All right, some of them. So, all right. So, no, you can do it. Well, I'll try. Okay. Okay, number, do I have to read all the numbers? Uh, I think so. <laughs> oh, nine seven four four one two eight. This is for a set of books for the book club. Nine seven four four one two eight. Any takers? Not all of them are on. So. Oh, okay. All right, we'll try again. <laughs> Nine. Oh, four one one three. Four one one three. Okay, it's the first, no. <laughs> Pat, <laughs> cause of trouble, 974-4128, okay, 974-4113, next, okay, 974-4020, okay, did, are these the right numbers, did yeah. people actually get these, 974-4112, Yay! We have one. Okay, so Joyce, you are going to get a selection of books for the next few months of the book club. And they include Barack Obama's autobiography, John McCain's autobiography, uh, Rebecca, Christmas Carol, and I can't remember what the other one is. But. Oh, The Death of Ivan Ilyich. And um, while she's doing that, we, the library did receive a federal grant this year from the Big Read, uh, for the Big Read, so we're thrilled with that. It's our first federal grant, and we will be reading The Death of Ivan Ilyich as a Big Read community-wide in January. Okay, 974-4064. 
Okay, Dean Brock, you may have the other select book club selection list. Leave the numbers with me. <laughs> okay, we'll start giving away some of the note cards from St. John's Bible. Um, okay, the last four digits, 4106. Okay, come on up, Jerry and Grandpa. Note cards. Uh, last four digits, 4104. 4104? Oh, we, okay. Uh, last four, 4103. 4103. Maybe I better mix these up. How many more do we have? 4126. Yep, okay. You can have some note cards. Is it one more? Okay, so the last gift is for, um, is a copy of the gospel. Oh, okay. oh, we have one more note card, sorry. Um, 4047. 4047? No. Okay. 4127, last four, 4127. Okay, Father Timothy. Okay. So the last gift is a, cop a copy of the St. John's Bible Gospels and Acts. This is um, from St. John's Abbey in Collegeville, Minnesota. It's the first hand, uh, handwritten illuminated Bible created in 500 years. And we have a reproduction of this volume on display here in our exhibit area, as well as 11 prints um, from the Bible itself. So this is, door prize is for someone with the last four digits, 4028. Did I just call that one? 4028. No one? Oh, you got it? Okay, come on up. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for coming. Please do help yourself to more cake, share stories, get pictures, and check out our exhibits. Thanks, everybody.